The NASA Space Radiation Laboratory is an outgrowth of Brookhaven National Laboratory's particle accelerator. It utilizes the heavy charged particle radiation beam from various components already existing at Brookhaven Lab to then deliver specific doses, ions, and energies of radiation to the actual NASA Space Radiation Lab itself with the goal to determine the potential risks to human beings from exposure to radiation during space travel. The bulk of the radiobiology data that we've collected from the NASA Space Radiation Research Laboratory has really helped us establish our space permissible exposure limits. NASA has a set of limits that helps protect the astronauts not only from the short-term effects of radiation but also the long-term health effects. In order to establish what those limits should be, we have to understand how space radiation is different than terrestrial radiation. And the experiments at NSRL has helped us establish our permissible exposure limits in terms of protecting the crew from the risk of radiation carcinogenesis and also setting non-cancer career limits to the brain for central nervous system effects and also to the heart for cardiovascular disease. The primary difference with trying to compare what type of radiation dose an astronaut would get on a mission to Mars versus what a, a person could expect in their day-to-day -day life over, over time is that time factor. Now, a mission to Mars, depending on when you go and how the planets are aligned and such, you're still looking at approximately a, a two to three year mission. And while that seems like a long time, it's very different than the amount of time that, say, a uh, and a non-astronaut, just a regular uh, person that has nothing to do with space travel, gets over, say, a 70, 80 year lifespan from, say, some radon gas in the home or from uh, medical tests that are administered where you get a certain amount of dose from uh, CT scans or PET scans and uh, x-rays uh, through the course of, of life. So you're delivering a certain amount of radiation dose in a more compressed period of time than you would to the person that uh, has never been a space traveler and such. And that's one of the trickiest aspects to trying to determine radiation dose. The same amount of radiation dose delivered in a day is very different than that same dose delivered in three years, even though, well, it's the same dose. It's not that simple, and that has to be evaluated when you try to determine the potential risks of absorbing that kind of a dose.